Hey y'all, so tomorrow, Monday, May 16th, makes exactly six months that I've been divorced. So I wanted to let y'all know how I'm doing. All right, y'all, first of all, I will say I'm getting better and better at this technology thing. Like, this is so great. Like, I've had this, like, tripod and this little remote for, like, I don't know, a year. But I'm just now using it. Awesome. I will say, you know, I have been doing quite well. I've just been experiencing continual healing. And, y'all, the first part of this video is going to be, like, a little transparent. So, if y'all don't want to hear the hard stuff, you know, skip ahead. All right, if y'all want to avoid the transparent part, please skip ahead to four minutes, 48 seconds. All right, y'all, so I will say I've had like one trigger, well, at least one trigger, one that I can think of right now in the last six months. And triggers are anything that, you know, remind you of what you went through. They could be, it could be a scent, it could be um, an image, it could be something you hear, just anything that will remind you of a painful memory. All right, y'all, so I work at the nursery in my church every first Sunday, and one of the mothers came in to nurse, and in the midst of us talking about Salty, the singing songbook, I couldn't help feel a little jealous. I thought to myself, my breasts look just like her, so why didn't guys like my breasts? But the truth is, you know, the ex-husband is the only one who didn't like my breasts. I mean, he only said this once, but he literally caught them ugly one day. And when I was ready to talk to him about that, he said I couldn't take a joke. But the Lord has told me that I was never supposed to endure any of that. I was never supposed to have any of those experiences. You know, the experiences that I had with him. And as soon as I had that thought, I just shook it off. I thought to myself, I was never su supposed to experience any of that with him. Um, he's the only one who ever told me that. And I know he's a liar. But I'd say that is the only trigger that I've had. Like, he did bully me about the size of my butt. <laughs> He may have seen it as teasing, but I saw it as bullying. And he will often say that I had a white girl butt, although not all white girls have flat butts. But yeah, you know, for me, it was constant bullying. And when I arrived in Florida, I realized that it had affected my psyche. You know, before I even met him, my butt, you know, was not a problem to me. And praise God, I can smile and laugh about it right now. You know, when I was writing out the script and what I was going to talk about in the video was really hard. And, you know, it was really hard for me to write out this next part that I'm going to share with y'all. I think maybe it's easier to talk about this because, you know, when I was writing it out, I was writing it out for the first time. And, you know, when you're realizing something for the first time, it hits you harder. But the more, you know, I reread re it and now that I'm saying it, you know, you know, it's, it's getting easier. But I'm just about to read to y'all you know, what I wrote regarding this part. Okay. I had to take a deep breath before sharing this part because it's kind of crazy. But I am a vessel for God and I know that sharing this may help to bring healing to some and that God gets the glory. So there's this one sex position that I often asked him to do. I'm not saying the name of it because I don't know a clean name for it. I'm not even sure if there is a clean name for it. But he would tell me no and give me a crazy excuse. But I recall some messages he was sending to a girl telling her that he paid her $50 to bend her over. Those were his exact words. For a while, it made me feel some type of way that the position he wasn't doing with me, he was doing with others. It took me some time to get over all of that. For a while, I couldn't even look at my butt. I wouldn't squat either because squatting and toning that part of me had become oppressive for me. But this journey has been revealing to me identity. I am a beautiful creation and nothing about me is a mistake. I have been working out and that part of me is more toned, but I'm intentional about embracing every part of my body no matter the season. I know there may come seasons when I stop working out that part of me which is why I have to love my bottom even if I stop squatting or lunging. I will say that my view of him continues to change more and more as the seasons change. But not only as the seasons change, but also as new revelation comes. All right, y'all. So this past weekend, I was going to visit my folks in Georgia. I decided not to because the Lord is doing a lot in my life. And I didn't want to just leave in the middle of it, even for just a few days. 
originally I was having second thoughts about visiting just because, you know, I would have been at my sister's often and my sister lives like just a few houses up from him. And I was feeling a bit timid, you know, thinking, thinking about him and I wasn't sure if I'd be able to simply ignore him if he and I were, if he and I were to see each other. So yeah, he was very manipulative. So I guess, you know, part of me was still feeling kind of small, but you know, later I told myself, you know, there is nothing and no one larger than God in my life. And I have no reason to fear, you know, lions are under my feet. I will say that sometimes I do feel concerned for him, but my life coach, praise God for her, she said that's normal. She said it's human. And I know like this past Mother's Day, you know, I was feeling really sad for him. My heart was aching because he lost his mom in like his early teen years. And the old Ash would have reached out to him to check on him to ensure that he was okay. But I'm like, you know, I'm not his wife anymore, you know, and that's not anything that I need to be doing. So yeah, even though I was feeling sad for him, I didn't contact him. I just prayed for his comfort. And I felt I felt that the Lord said, you know, he was comforted. So, you know, it is important to me that he is comforted. All right, fun fact, y'all. About a month, nah, maybe two, two and a half weeks after my divorce, I got a new car. So my divorce was final in November, 2019. And in December, 2019, I was needing a new car. I had a lime green Ford Taurus that I paid 1,000 cash for in June of 2019. All right, y'all, here's a pic of it. Here's a picture of the 1995 green, lime green Ford Taurus. My sis Danielle had loaded my dresser and my bed onto the car when I was transitioning from my brother's house to a house with roommates. So yeah, it was a 1995 Ford Taurus, you know, and I really loved it. You know, I would speak to the car. I would sing to the car. It didn't sing or talk back, praise God, but I really loved it. I named it the Green Blessing. That car gave its best. It really did. Um, I always considered it to be an old man who worked hard all his life, but was still giving what he could. I rode that car, you know, I put money into that car until I could just deal with it no longer, you know. It would leave me stranded. I'd be left stranded at Walmart, you know, unable to get home. But praise God, my roommate was at Walmart at the same time, you know. So, I was able to get home that night. Um, I would be stranded at home, unable to get to work. Stranded at home, unable to get to my workout. I went to the car dealership and I fell in love with the 2020 Chevy Spark. So yeah, they told me yes. So the only thing I had to do was pick out a color, which is like so great. It's so great when you have a yes and the only decision you need to make is, you know, what color should it be? So I fell in love with the Chevy Spark and I had already been having little talks with the Green Blessing, telling it I loved it and I appreciated it. And that it was a great car and that I'd never forget it. Like I would actually cry during these talks. I even remember speaking to my trainer one day about the car and he asked me if I wanted to keep it forever. I don't remember what I told him, but I did want to keep that car forever. When it was time to get the Chevy Spark, when it was time to trade in my Taurus, I was like super emotional and it was hard. And I was telling the car salesman, oh my God, it was, it was really hard for me to transition from Georgia to Florida. I wasn't crying, <laughs> but I was saying these things and I was like, that car? has been with me through my divorce and I saved for it. Now, I don't know, maybe the salesmen hear stuff like that all the time, you know, because, you know, all he did was just express sympathy. Now, on the outside, he was expressing sympathy. I'm not sure what he was thinking on the inside, although I know he was glad that I signed them papers. I mean, the papers to get the Chevy Spark. He wasn't glad that I signed the divorce papers. So y'all, I had two sets of keys for my Ford Taurus. One set I kept in my purse and the other set I kept in the house just in case I lost the set that was in my purse. And yeah, I gave the car dealership one set when I traded in the car. But you know, um, yeah, the other set I didn't have on me, of course. But that set is sitting in my Chevy Spark. And here's a picture of my Chevy Spark. 
2020 Chevy Spark 2020 Blessing. Say hello to the new thing. Say hello to the new thing God is doing. Say hello to the new thing. Say hello to the new thing God is doing. And you know, I'm grateful for the new things. I have a great car that is super reliable, you know. Um, but, you know, I'll always be grateful for the Ford Taurus because it was a blessing to me at a time when I really needed it. You know, as I continue to come up and go higher, I never talk down on the things that I had or what I went through because everything, everything that I ever possessed or went through was a significant part of my journey. You know, sometimes I wonder what happened to that Ford Taurus. Like, is anybody driving it? Was it like sold for parts? You know, is it in Ford Taurus heaven? It was green inside and out. But yeah, y'all, that's the story of my Ford Taurus, you know. It didn't have air and it couldn't go far, but it had heat and it had heart. So yeah, y'all, praise God for that chapter of my life. And yeah, y'all, um, here are just some little notes I wrote. Since I arrived in Florida on November 18th, 2018, it's been a journey of alignment. Aligning my thoughts, aligning my vision, aligning my heart. I'm sold out to God. Yes, I am. I am his vessel. I belong to him. He is my God, my master. And what I like about God is that he isn't an unkind master. He isn't an unkind king. He speaks gently to me. Sometimes he speaks firmly to me, but never harshly. He knows how to speak to me. He is a good God. He isn't a tyrant. He is loving and trustworthy. Whatever you think about or could talk about throughout the day, all day long, is what or whom you hold on a pedestal. That is what or whom you worship. I worship the living God who made heaven and earth. But yeah, y'all, I've just been getting back to the things that I enjoy, you know, also discovering new passions and just improving in every way. And I'm just grateful, you know, I'm able to just get in my car and play my country music, you know, no one is turning my country music off. No one is turning my gospel off. Yeah, my gospel used to get turned off. But praise God, you know, I'm running in my car. I'm listening to Rascal Flats. I'm listening to Craig Morgan, you know, I'm listening to Brooks and Dunn and we're all just having a good old time. So yeah, yeah, I'm just trying to be intentional about moving as he wants me to move. I pray for strength when I need it. You know, I'm trying to do everything in this season that God wants it to be done. I don't want to miss, you know, doing something in that particular season because the Lord has need of it. And also, you know, the Lord has told me that I'm ready for my husband. Yeah, yeah, that beautiful man. Yeah, I was like, Lord, is there anything I need to do? Anything I need to learn before I meet him? And he was like... Just be you, just be Ash. I was like, okay. And yeah, y'all, the Lord has just been removing all the gunk from my life. Like, okay, consistency and keeping my car clean, keeping my room clean, um, cleaning the house and just uprooting the lies of the enemy. So yeah, you can call God the cleaner. Which actually used to be one of my favorite movies. Like Cedric the Entertainer is so funny. I haven't seen it in a while though. But yeah, as I mentioned, sometimes I do have to pray for strength, yeah, no, because he keeps us challenged. He keeps us challenged. And like th like with my workouts, I'll be having to put on my boxing gloves, not literal boxing gloves. I don't have those yet, but in the spirit, I'm putting on my boxing gloves and I'm pushing through. And I use my imagination often, you know, I like that guy, Jesus. So I'm picturing Jesus. If I'm wearing my boxing gloves, Jesus is too. If I'm pushing through a run, Jesus is running with me. And sometimes I like literally see the Holy Spirit just using his hands to kind of push me forward, to propel me a bit so that I won't stop running. But yeah, y'all, right now I'm 27 and as the theme song for Sunny with a Chance goes, so far so great. Shout out to Demi Lovato, you know, I loved her growing up. Jay, let's watch Camp Rock. All right, y'all, and down here I just wrote, I'm abundantly grateful for my journey. I love my journey. I'm grateful to God who has my story all written out. I say thank you, Lord, for my story. And thank you for not allowing me to die when it became hard to keep going. 
All right, y'all, that's my sixth month update. All glory goes to our marvelous creator. May he continue to show himself mighty in our lives. May we always be grateful for our lives. And may we never forget what he's doing, what he's done, what he will do, and that he's good. Well, thank y'all for watching. I love y'all. Subscribe if you like. And, you know, my prayer is that you guys are able to sing along with me for your lives. I pray that you're able to sing so far so great or, you know, even better, always so great. I love y'all. God bless and y'all have an awesome day.